Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. Today I'm going to be starting a new series on the most common triggers for Meniere's disease attacks. And today we're talking about infections. So if you have Meniere's disease and you're still having vertigo and dizziness and tinnitus, which means your Meniere's disease is not stable, I think you'll find today's video very helpful. So let's get into it. So why would infections be a common trigger? Well, it's all about the immune system. So if we just stop for a second and just say, hey, what is Meniere's disease? Meniere's disease is a disease of the inner ear. Sometimes it's called endolymphatic high drops. Essentially, there's too much fluid in the inner ear. And what happens is it crushes the inner ear from the inside out. And that can cause episodic tinnitus, you know, the high pitch or the low pitch. It can cause garbled hearing. Uh, basic a lot of auditory changes and of course can cause episodic vertigo or rotational symptoms, right? Now in my practice, I've been treating Meniere's patients for a very long time and what seems to be the common theme for the people that make it to me, which means their Meniere's disease is not stable, is the immune system. Almost every one of these patients ends up having some sort of problem with their immune system that they either already knew about, like an outright autoimmune condition, or one that they didn't know they had, such as some sort of immune system deficiency or an inflammatory problem. So infections though, infections are a common trigger for Meniere's disease. I would say probably half of my patients in their history will show that they've had an upper respiratory infection or a cold or a flu or their kid brought something home from daycare and then their Meniere's uh, symptoms kicked up. And why is that? Because when you have an infection, your immune system gets turned on and if the immune system is already the problem in your Meniere's disease, then that uh, flaring up of the immune system can make the inflammatory process in the inner ear kick up, and then you can have all those symptoms like the vertigo and the tinnitus and the, the nausea and even, even the uh, uh, vomiting. So we've got to ask ourselves, if that's a common trigger, what do you do about it? Well, again, in my experience over the last 20 years, uh, almost every Meniere's patient I've ever treated, and I've got several case studies that I've put up here that you guys can look at, uh, they do very well when you find out what is going on with their immune system. And the, really the best way to do that is to do two types of testing. Uh, one is called multiple tissue antibody testing, and I'll put an example up here. Uh, and that's a way to find out if a patient has some kind of autoimmune problem. Now, this test here looks for about 24 different kinds of autoimmune conditions. Uh, from one blood sample. And, you know, an individual Meniere's patient may not have one of the things that's tested, but it's a nice kind of survey. And we're doing that test to kind of cast a net to find out, do you have an autoimmune problem that you didn't already know about? And if you do, well, that immediately tells us we need to be treating you like you have an autoimmune problem. And so the second test that I like to do is what's called uh, comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping. Uh, what that means is this, and I'll put that one up here. Uh, a phenotype is just what something looks like. So an immunophenotype means what does your immune system look like? And I always tell people that this is like an immune system fingerprint test. Now you guys know that everybody has their own unique fingerprints, but you also have your own unique immune system. Sure, we have a lot of the same cells, T cells and B cells and Th1, but exactly what your immune system is doing in your Meniere's disease is different from someone else's. You can give me a hundred people that have been diagnosed with, with Meniere's disease who are having tinnitus and vertigo and maybe chronic imbalance from the damage that's caused from that. But when you look at their immune system, they all have their own individual nuances and subtleties and it's really important. So for example, like on this case right here, you can see that this thing is high and that this thing is high. And that's really important to know because I treat those differently. Now that I know that those are the problem, I can do things to try to normalize them, but I'm not gonna know those are the problem unless we do the test. So for me uh, and Meniere's patients, uh, infections triggering the symptoms in the history tells me that their immune system's gotta be involved. And then we've gotta do some additional testing to find out is it an autoimmune problem or is it some sort of non-autoimmune problem? Now, autoimmune just means that uh, the immune system is making antibodies and those antibodies are sticking to things that it wants to attack. Now in Meniere's disease, uh, there's not that common of actual inner ear autoimmune attacks. They're there for sure. More often though, the Meniere's for most patients is it's a collateral damage from a autoimmune problem outside the inner ear. And that's why looking at that test I was showing a minute ago that's got uh, stomach antibodies and intestinal antibodies and muscle and joint and cartilage antibodies and thyroid antibodies, 
we're trying to find out where is the fire coming from. And there's a lot of potential sources for that. So if you have found that infections make your Meniere's disease flare up, that is telling you that your immune system is part of the problem. It may not be 100%, but you know it's a huge part of it. And that means you're going to have to work with someone who can be a detective and start drilling down and figuring out what's your immunophenotype. Where is the inflammation coming from? Do you happen to have a chronic infection as it is? Maybe you're not resilient to infections. Maybe you have food reactions and food sensitivities and barrier problems. There's a lot potentially to look at. So my best advice is, is if infections have been a trigger for your Meniere's disease, you need to work with a, a doctor who knows what to look for and help you get to the bottom of it. Because I really don't care what you've been told over the last however long you've had Meniere's disease, but it is possible to get better, to stabilize. But you're going to have to work with someone that understands all these things that we talked about today. So stay tuned for the next videos on the most common triggers for Meniere's disease because there's a bunch. See you next time.